Hi, I'm E.C. Dreyer, and today I'm bringing you a new game called Dungeons & Deuces. Sort of like uh, Dungeons & Dragons Lite, only instead of using dice, uh, it uses playing cards. So there's a little bit more uh, strategy than luck, but there's still a heavy element of luck in it, which makes it fun for a party game. It's really easy to get into, and best of all, it's absolutely free. And it's sort of our thank you to our supporters for letting us live our dreams. So let's get right into it. First, each player draws five cards from their own deck. Each player needs their own deck of playing cards. Then they place their top card face up next to their deck to begin their discard pile. We'll cover why in just a bit. Then the Game Master, or GM, begins drawing enemies, adding their difficulty values together. Difficulty values are displayed prominently on the cards. They're those big numbers. Like a game of blackjack, the players choose to hit or stay after every enemy. And also like blackjack, there's a specific value that the players are trying to reach. This is called the target difficulty, which is simply the number of players times 5. In this case, there are two players, so the target difficulty is 10. Currently, the encounter has a Skelly Belly and a Spectre. Their difficulty values are 2 and 3, so that gives us a total difficulty of 5. As long as the difficulty remains under the target difficulty of 10, the encounter would be fairly easy and players would automatically get to go before the GM. But the players have seen their hand and are feeling confident, so they hit again. Uh-oh, we've drawn a vampire, which has difficulty of 6, bringing our total difficulty to 11, which is more than 10. The players have chosen to stay now, but this encounter will be more challenging. They'll have to draw for initiative, to see if they go first or the GM does. On the plus side, if they manage to win, they'll get improved loot. But for now, let's go back to our GM, who's in the process of drawing a hand for each of the enemies as instructed by the enemy cards themselves. Next, since the players were over the target difficulty, they draw for initiative. One of the players draws the top card from their deck, and the GM does the same. Looks like the players lucked out this time. They won the initiative check and will go first. Now on to the combat. The players can go in whichever turn order they'd like. In this case, the rogue attacks the vampire with a pair of queens. The vampire must defend with an equal number of cards, which in this case is two. The winner is determined by poker rules. This is how combat works in Dungeons and Deuces. The attacker presents a hand and the defender must match it in the number of cards. In a single card hand, the winner is the one with the higher value. But just to be clear, you can't defend a single card with a pair, a triple, a four of a kind, or even a five card hand. You must match the attack and the number of cards played. For hands with two cards or more, poker rules are applied to determine the winner. So in this case, a pair beats no pair, even though the cards are higher on the defender's side. After the combat is resolved, both sides discard all the cards they used, but only the winner draws cards equal to the number of cards they used in attack. Now it's the druid's turn, and she's going to use an ability. Abilities are written on the class cards. The druid's first level ability allows her to sacrifice a club to draw two cards. Once she's drawn her cards and discarded the club, she's ready to attack. She throws a king at the vampire. Now the vampire must defend with a single card. And he's got an ace. The druid loses this attack, and only the vampire will draw one card. Since both players have gone, now it's the enemy's turn. Enemies also have abilities written on their cards. Like the players, they only have one ability at level 1, but they won't gain a second until level 3. Enemies can also go in whichever order the GM chooses, but they have to attack the player with the highest card showing on top of their discard pile, also called the threat card. The druid has a king as her threat card, which is higher than the rogue's queen, so the vampire targets her for attack. He throws a pair of eights at her, but the druid, that sneaky gal, she had a pair of eights too. Since the result is a tie, both the druid and the vampire draw two cards apiece. The GM puts down the cards and moves on to the next enemy, which is the specter. Now he doesn't have a very good hand, so he just throws an 8 at the rogue, since the rogue has a higher threat card. The rogue blocks with an ace, which means that he gets the draw, but the GM will not. Next up is the big bad Skelly Belly with two cards. Now it doesn't look like he has much, but the Skelly actually has an ability called Arm to the Teeth, which give his spade cards a wild range of plus or minus 3. This allows him to play a 6 and 9 as a pair of 9s at the rogue. And now it's the rogue's turn to defend. He throws down a pair of jacks, and that does it for our scally belly. It also concludes the enemy's turn and finishes the entire round. 
But before we kick it back to the players, the GM draws two cards for the Spectre. The Spectre's Blessing of Schadenfreude allows them to draw two cards when anyone is defeated. Maybe they should have targeted him first. Now it's the player's turn again, and the rogue is going to use his Steel ability on the vampire. Steel allows the rogue to pick two cards from an enemy. The enemy reveals those cards, and if one of them is a diamond, the enemy must discard that card. The rogue then draws equal to the number of cards discarded. And next, the druid plays a five card hand, a straight. Since the vampire only has three cards, there's no way he could block it. Poor vampire, if he only had a heart, he could have used his mist form ability to negate the attack, but too bad he's defeated. We fast forward a little bit and lo and behold the players have emerged victorious. What's more, the rogue has a pair of deuces, so he's gonna get some loot. The GM deals the rogue a card from a separate deck of playing cards called the loot deck, and the rogue places it in front of his deck as a reminder. Now his seven of clubs has a special property. Outside of custom quest gear, there are three tiers of loot, common, rare, and epic. Common loot gives the card a wild range of one, allowing you to play it as itself or one value higher. Aces can become aces plus one or even higher when combined with other abilities. Rare loot makes the card count as a double, which means that it can be played as a pair by itself or used to form triples, four of a kinds, or full houses with other cards. An epic turns it into a wild card, allowing you to play it as any suit or value of your choice up to an ace. The tier of loot given is determined by the amount of deuces the player has in his hand at the end of an encounter. A pair of deuces are common loot. Three deuces are rare loot. Four or more deuces are epic. But going back to our encounter, remember how we went over the target difficulty and the players had to draw for initiative? Well now they get a deuce added to each of their hands bringing the rogue's two deuces to three, earning him rare loot. But the druid's zero deuces turn to a single, which still doesn't earn her any loot. Better luck next time, druid. Twos or not, the players discard their remaining cards and their discard piles begin to grow. Whenever any player goes through their entire deck, the whole party levels up, at which point they reshuffle their discard piles back into their decks, draw a single card to get their discard pile going again, and continue on adventuring in the land of cards. So that's Dungeons and Deuces in a nutshell. There's lots of enemy sets and classes to explore inspired by various genres. There are also several ways to play the game. For beginners we recommend the quest for power, which is the simplest objective. Reach level 6 without having your whole party wiped out. The quest for loot is also good for a quick party game. You can learn the rules on our site. But the Dungeons and Deuces system can also be applied to standard pen and paper like campaigns. We call these traditional quests, and just like their D&D cousins, they can have whole worlds to explore, unique bosses and challenges to face in custom gear. We made up a little quest to help you get started on our site, but we invite you to create your own. Lastly, we'd love to get your feedback on the game and how we can continue to improve it. We also invite you to create and share your own classes or enemy sets, post them on our forums, and we may even add them to the official game. Thanks for your time, we hope you enjoy playing Dungeons & Deuces. 